welcome back to Expert Guides YouTube channel. So for today, before everything else, I would like to first introduce myself. So my name is Rella Lunis Pipilishano or RELS. I was a graduate of BS Electronics Engineering from Bataan Penso State University and a previous USD scholar under RA7687. So I was also a former executive auditor and program speaker for our university volunteerism organization, Palangay Bayani. And during the summers of my college years from June to July 2017 and 2018, I experienced uh, being an elementary school tutor and a helper at City Plaza Clerk. So for this one, for my internship, from June 3 up to August 6, 2019, I took them up at Texas Instrument Park, Pampanga, under the position of QFN Assembly Process Engineer. So enough about me. Let's talk about our lesson for today. So for today's lesson, we will be uh, learning all about the basic uh, trigonometric functions, which is under plane trigonometry. Let me give you a quick uh, brief or brief uh, introduction with regards to trigo, okay? So trigo, as we all know, is actually the study of triangles, wherein we apply the relationship between the sides and angles of a triangle. So this one could be subdivided into plane and spherical. So whereas plane deals with triangles that are two-dimensional, spherical deals with those that are extracted from the surface of a sphere. So for under plane trigonometry, it could be subdivided into solving two types of triangles, which is the right triangle and the obtuse triangle. So we will be focusing more on right triangles. So what are trigonometric functions? So trigonometric functions are those functions of an arc or angle that relate the angle of a right triangle to the ratio of the two side lengths. So this is why they're also known as circular functions or angle functions. So in the most simplest way, trigonometric functions could be expressed in terms of the ratios of pairs of sides of the right angle triangle. So what do we mean by ratios? In other words, it's also known as the fractions. Fractions of what? The sides of this right triangle here. So the most basic or the six basic trigonometric functions, these are sine, denoted by S-I-N, cosine, denoted by C-O-S, tangent, denoted by T-A-N, second, denoted by S-E-C, cosecant, denoted by C-S-C, and the last one, cotangent, denoted by C-O-T. So later on, we will be discussing the relationship of uh, the six among themselves. All right, so for the next one, let's bring back our right triangle or talk about at least the right triangle. So as I mentioned before, the right triangle is the basis for trigonometry. So as we all know, the side opposite of the right angle here, denoted by this perpendicular or this small square right here, this one is called the hypotenuse, which is the longest side among the three sides of this right triangle. So the side adjacent to the right angle right here, these are called the legs. Now, depending on the position of the angle or theta, which could be placed here or here, or just like by example here, let's just follow this one. So the leg opposite of this angle or in front of it is known as the opposite side. But the leg that is right next to this angle or adjacent to this angle is known as the adjacent side. So one way that we can solve for the sides or the length of the sides of our right triangle is through the Pythagorean theorem. So it states that in any right triangle, the square of the longest side, which is the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides, or the legs. So Pythagorean theorem, um, this can be used if we are given at least two lengths of the side. So we can use it as long as we're given length. So this is or can be denoted by the formula of c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, where c is for the hypotenuse and ab are the lengths of the legs. So another way that we can solve for this one is to the use of Sokatoa, as we all know. So Sokatoa is a way to remember or a memorization technique where we can remember sine, which is equal to opposite side divided by hypotenuse, the cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent theta is equal to opposite side divided by the adjacent. So take note here, as you can see, tangent is actually equal to sine over 
cosine theta. Therefore, we have this one divided by this one, or the ratio for cosine theta. By dividing this two, we can cancel hypotenuse below, and therefore tangent is actually equal to them, opposite over adjacent side. Okay, so let's um, going further for this one. Let's have an example, okay? So what is the length of side AC given that AB is six units in length and that the angle CBA is equal to 50 degrees? So let's first illustrate our right triangle as we can see here and list down our given. So what we're given is that 50 degrees is for CBA and that AB is actually equal to six units. So AB is our hypotenuse, okay? So what we're missing is side AC, which we can list out or let be unknown as X. So to solve this one, remember Sokatoa. So the one that we're given is the hypotenuse. The one we're missing is side AC, and we're also given 50 degrees. So as we can look here, or as we can see here, the one that we're given coincides with sine. So we're given the hypotenuse. We're looking for the opposite side of the angle, which is 50, and we can directly substitute this one for theta. Therefore, directly substituting them, we can obtain this one. So side AC is replaced by letter X for our, our, our unknown. AB is six units and we have 50 degrees. So during uh, this one, we can use cross multiplication and therefore X is equal to sine 50 degrees multiplied by six units or 4.6 units. So this is the length of our side AC. Now moving on, let's bring back our right triangle in Sohatoa. So the other three trigonometric functions that we have uh, to say are cosecant, for example, which is equal to hypotenuse over opposite side. So note here that H over O is actually the opposite of what we can see here for sine. Therefore, by noting here, we can know that sine is equal to 1 over cosecant theta, or that cosecant theta is actually 1 over sine. They are the inverses or the reciprocals of each other. The other one that we have is secant theta, which is hypotenuse side divided by the adjacent side. And noting this one again is actually the opposite of cosine, which is A over H. Therefore, we can say that secant and cosine are inverses or reciprocals. Therefore, cosine theta is equal to 1 over second theta, or that second is equal to 1 over cosecant theta. The last one that we have is cotangent, which is adjacent over the opposite side. Therefore, it is the opposite of tangent. Since tangent is equal to sine over cosine theta, we can say that cotangent is actually equal to cosine theta over sine theta. Or if we sub or substitute, this two with their inverses for cosecant and second, we can have cotangent, which is equal to cosecant theta over second theta. Now, for beginners, this might be a little bit confusing because you have to memorize a lot of functions on the first day, right? So one way that we can remember this uh, basic trigonometric functions or our six functions is through the use of this hexagon. So how can we use this one? So note first that the functions that starts with letter S are placed above, and the functions starting with letter C are placed below. Now, the functions that have a letter T in their denoted sign are placed outside or left and right of our hexagon. So on the left side, it goes down. On the right side, the letter T goes upwards. So the first one above is sine, the other S is for second. Below, we can see that just directly below sine is cosine. Now, under second, we have cosecant theta. Now, as we know, tangent or TAN has its letter T on the leftmost. That's TAN. So we have tangent placed on the left side, going or denoting downwards. The other one, which is cotangent or COT, has its letter T placed on the most right. Therefore, it's placed on the right side or denoting upwards. 
So how can we use this hexagon? So one way first to note, or a good thing to note, is that all the basic uh, functions uh, involved in Sokatowo are placed on the left side, the sine, cosine, and tangent. The other three functions, second, cosecant, and cotangent, are placed on the, or grouped, on the right side. Now proceeding to the use of this hexagon, we can say that the function opposite itself is its reciprocal. Therefore, for this memorization technique, you can see that sine, for example, has an opposite function, which is cosecant. Therefore, we can say that sine is equal to 1 over cosecant. And cosecant here, since it's opposite to sine, its reciprocal should be 1 over sine theta. The same goes for cosine and secant, where cosine is equal to the reciprocal of the function opposite itself, which is 1 over secant. And then secant here is equal to the reciprocal of its opposite, which is 1 over cosine theta. The last ones are tangent and cotangent, which are also reciprocals of each other. Now, one good thing to note about this hexagon is that if we follow the left downward arrow, uh, tangent means it's equal to the fraction above over the below function. So how do we note this? So following tangent going downwards, we know that sine theta, the function above, is sine over the function below cosine theta. Therefore, tangent is equal to sine over cosine theta. The other one to note is that if we substitute this one, we know that tangent is also equal to second theta over cosecant theta. This are going downward. So the above functions over the below functions is equal to tangent on the left side. Now another way is that we follow the right upward arrow or cotangent means that it's equal to the fraction of the below function over the above function. So for cotangent on the right side, it goes upwards. Therefore, as we know that this is the inverse or the reciprocal of tangent, we know that it is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. So that's right here. And cotangent is also equal to as we substitute cosecant theta over secant theta. So this is one way or good way to remember um, the relationship between our six basic trigonometric functions. So let's have an example for this one. So what is the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle given uh, the length of the other two sides? So as we here have here, let's list down our given, which is side First side, which is noted as 1 over sine theta multiplied by quantity cosine squared theta times second theta all over cotangent theta. The other side is sine theta multiplied by quantity 1 minus cotangent theta over tangent theta cosine theta minus cosine theta. Now, what we're required here or looking for the unknown is actually the square of the hypotenuse, which is C or denoted by C squared. Now, since it says that it's a right triangle, we can also use what? Since we're given the uh, lengths of A and B or the other sides and we're looking for hypotenuse, one formula we can use is the Pythagorean theorem, okay, which is denoted by six, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So we can note uh, these two given as A and B. So remember, or we can use here our hexagon earlier if we don't want to memorize the uh, relationship between these six trigonometric functions. So we can just use this hexagon. So let's solve for our missing, which is C squared. So let's first simplify the leg A. So leg A, as we can see here, we have on the middle here, or in this inside our parentheses, we have cosine squared theta multiplied by second theta over cotangent theta. Now we know that cotangent theta is equal to cosine theta divided by sine theta. So we substitute this one and divide them. So dividing them means uh, multiplying this one over the reciprocal of our denominator. Therefore, we can cancel cosine here and one cosine here since this is squared. Therefore, the one that stays behind is cosine theta second theta times sine. 
But as we can note here, there is one over sine theta outside of the parenthesis. So since, since the parenthesis denotes multiplication, we can just cancel sine. So the one that stays behind is cosine theta multiplied by second theta. But note here in our hexagon that cosine and second are directly opposite of each other. Therefore, they are reciprocals or inverses of each other. So we can substitute second is equal to one over cosine theta. Therefore, canceling them, leg A or side A is equal to one unit. So let's note that down. So let's also simplify uh, leg B. So for leg B, we have here on the denominator, as we can see, we can factor out cosine theta. So factoring out cosine theta, we have sine theta multiplied by quantity one minus cotangent theta all over cosine theta times quantity tangent theta minus one. So as we can see here, we have sine over cosine theta, which is sine over cosine theta going downwards is equal to tangent theta. So we can substitute this one to have similar functions to each other. So for this one, substituting them, we multiply tangent to our numerator. Doing so, we have similar functions, but note here that we have cotangent. But what is cotangent? Cotangent is the opposite or the inverse or reciprocal of tangent. Therefore, substituting cotangent, which is equal to one over tangent, we can cancel this side. And having the same numerator and denominator, therefore, B or leg B is equal to one unit as well. So since we have A and B equal to one, we can obtain C squared, which is equal to one squared plus one squared. And therefore, we have an answer of two units. So C squared is equal to two units. All right, so furthermore, later on, we have more lessons with regards to basic trigonometric identities. Uh, if you have further questions as well, or inquiries with regards to expert guides, we have uh, these numbers here, which you can call whenever you're ready. So expert guides not only provides a reviews for, or online reviews for college entrance exams, we also provide reviews for SATs and other examinations. So for this one, we also have enrichment and review programs. And we provide a program that covers for math, science, and English or Filipino. So we have up to eight batches here. So I would advise everyone, if you have inquiry, inquiries, please give us a call whenever. All right, thank you.